Welcome to the episodes with Matt Pavich. I'm Matt Pavich. Today I'm joined by host of Question Party, stand-up comedian, one of my good friends, Dan, I should have said best friends, one of my best friends. Speak your truth, dude. <laughs> you looked sad for a second. Yeah. Uh, one of my best friends, Dan Davies, everybody. Dan Davies is in the building. Handshake? You want? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have... Feels like an interview now. Okay. It's an interview, baby. Let's do it, babe. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for doing Big it. Big fan of the show. Big fan of the pod. I cried with, to your, with your father's one. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. I, I, I thought about making my dad listen to it. That would be interesting. I know. But yeah, he'd be like, see, it's not that bad. What's not that bad? Everything's just not that bad. When, As When uh, his errors come up, he's like, yeah, it's not that bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. Um... So you have been there for uh, a lot of my little episodes. Sure. Yeah. Little ones and big ones. Little ones and big ones. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess today's episode will be about being good friends with someone that has uh, the old bipolar one. Yeah. Um, Things you've done that have worked, things you've done that have not worked. Um... I know that in the past you've explained that you have some guilt for your part in my episodes because we were partying, going out a lot, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, have you, have I made that abundantly clear that you should not have any guilt for any of that stuff? Or? Well, yes and no. I mean, you've made it clear, but what I didn't know was that the partying, you know, at the time, I didn't realize how much the partying was impacting the mental health. Right. And when I say partying, I mean drinking, drugs, going out till, you know, late in the in the a.m. Yeah. Um, you know, because you're my best, I'm oh, sorry, one of my best friends. And <laughs> I, I took top 10 acquaintance for sure. And yeah. I love hanging out with you. Right. And I'm, I party a bit. Right. And so I liked having you around those times. And I didn't realize that, like, by staying out till four, you weren't taking the medicine at the right time. And it was just, like, starting to snowball. And so I felt responsible, or at least, like, I had done some enabling in your last big episode, which was 2018? Yeah, 2018. Yeah. We had enabling, episode. that's a good word. That's a word that gets thrown around a lot yeah. um, with people and their family members and friends and it's like you know how much accountability does a person have for understanding that they have something that makes them not be able to do things Mm -hmm. like party and uh go out late and i wasn't taking my medicine at all uh which was a big problem yeah because i started to feel good and i was like fuck this you know i feel great what do i need medicine for which you know is a very slippery slope and something I'm trying desperately to never do again. But uh, I don't know. Enabling is like. Uh, Was I not enabling? You you were, you were for sure. But it it feels a little bit like a cop out on my end to be. You know I'm. 30 years old, 32 years old. I was, well, that, that comes into play. So like during this, you know, as someone that was dealing with it and that was the second, this last one, this last big one that ultimately led to another, um, admission was the second big one that I've dealt with with you. And, but I, I didn't know you so well the first time. And then, but I was like, you know, again, top, top five friend the second time. Right. And I remember dealing with your family and helping like, you know, really, putting a team together that kind of that was on mat duty and I, I was very much like as a you know a person that's dealing with someone that's BP1 it's like I was like okay what do we do? I have to like follow you around with these like you, you know protective gloves this whole time and I was like we can't let him go to a show because he'll embarrass himself and he won't get booked at that club again or I can't let him meet this person while he's like this or they think that he, like I was very much like I gotta I gotta I gotta yeah. and at some point I, I forget which sister, they're all so brilliant when it comes to handling you in these situations. They said, one of them said, yeah, he's an adult. And so at some point, he has to really start taking care of himself. Yeah. And that means like going to bed at a certain time, taking the medicine, um, 
uh, eating, like you were just eating like, tra- you're just eating sugar, just pure shit. Really? Yeah. You just, that's all you ate was just shit, if you ate at all. Yeah, I wasn't eating that much, I remember that. And then I remember, and when, again, and I know this now, but when you, I hear you on the podcast that you don't sleep, like you really don't sleep. No. I thought you just meant like five hours. No, 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 I mean zero hours. You just don't sleep. Yeah. And I remember you being like, I took a Benadryl, I'm falling asleep, I'm good, but like, that's not sleep. No, that's something I was doing, was uh, drugging myself with Benadryl to yeah. appease the fam and Katie, and I'd be like, oh, I got like three hours, you know, and they'd be like, yeah, it's been three days, you should get more than three hours of sleep. That's crazy. It's literally... Uh, that's, it's, like, I thought it was, I thought it was bad sleep, but you were just weren't No, no, no sleep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and enjoying it and yeah. being like, this is awesome. I don't need sleep. Mm-hmm. It's not even like I'm, you know, upset about it. Mm-hmm. I'm psyched. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's so, it's unfortunate that it, like takes one of these episodes as a caregiver. It like takes an episode to like learn from. Yeah. Like I'm so much more equipped to deal with you. After two of these, right? Then I was after the first one again. After the second, of course. But you know, and and you know, knock on knock this, on knock way. on this beautiful table. Because the last one was a long, big, too long, big, big one. Ugh, it was so that was like long. A four month, maybe I, more. We don't know when it really, really, really started. If it was during that summer or what, but it got no bad October like yeah. the third. I remember. Yeah, I know. And. uh what was I gonna say? Fuck! I had a good point. Um, fuck. First one, second one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you have also uh, checked me since that mm-hmm. big one. Mm-hmm. There's been, uh, I think, one time that you were like, "Hey, man, I think you're uh, ramping up a little bit," mm-hmm. and. I responded. Not great. Not great. Yeah. Which is a red flag. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how did I respond? I'm I'm curious to know. You came to me and you were like, "Hey, man, I think you're ramping up a little bit." You said, <laughs> "You said I know when you are ramping up a little bit because you want to hang out with me more." Yeah. Which broke my little heart. Yeah. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Oh, my fr- good news is my friend wants to hang out with me. Bad news is full blown manic episode. It's a full blown manic episode. No, you pick up your fucking phone. That's man. not true. You know that's not true. I know it's not true. But um, I'll be golf, you want to hang out with? Me. Yes, 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 yes. Um. So yeah. how how did I respond? I don't. I, I remember you and Katie sort of came to me and right. were like, "Well, yeah, that's the that's the part that you I think struggle with." Yeah, and and um, it, which is that it feels like we're conspiring against you mm-hmm. and we are mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we are just always checking in and I think that when well, you have such a great network behind you and a, a team behind you that you have to understand that we're always going to be checking in with each other and you guys you know and the big thing like Sarah mentioned it too your sister was that you know you do get a look in your eye and I feel pretty uh, I feel I, I think I can tell by looking at your eyes you know if you if, if you're kind of getting there or not and, um, you know, so it's like, has anyone literally gotten eyes on Matt recently? Like, he seems a little ramping up. And so I talked to Katie that, that time. I'm, I'm barely remembering it. And this kind of plays in, like, <sighs> the brain is a beautiful thing because it blacks out trauma. Yeah. In this way that I think we think is helpful. And now we're discovering maybe not so helpful. And, you know, I'm not here to talk about that. But I'm here to plug my new album. It comes out. No, but this idea that um, I, I, don't, I don't really remember having that conversation with you, frankly. Yeah, and PTSD. I don't remember so much of even taking care of you. I think it'll kind of kick in, unfortunately, you know, if it comes back. But there's some stuff that I kind of black out. I mean, I quit my corporate job during your last episode. Not, 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 not because of it, but like it all kind of came to fruition. There's just so much going on. It kind of prioritized things for me. And... Um, I, I definitely black out 
you know, how, how terrible things. And then you, you black it out too. And I've heard you say that, but when you say blackout, you mean like you don't remember or is it like oh, drinking blackout? Or like, yeah, it's sort of like drinking blackout. So I'm going to be like, oh, remember when you did this? And I'm like, kind of, yeah. but I don't. You don't know if they're just remembering their memory. Their memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's, you know, pictures and videos because it's 2021 and yeah. you're like, holy hell. Yeah. Not good. Yeah. But the, 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 I'm starting to remember this more. I remember I was at a restaurant with my, my sister and my girlfriend at the time being like bummed out and scared thinking, Ugh, here we go again. And checking in with Katie and uh, another friend of ours. Um, and, and he was hanging out with you that day, too. And I was like, does everything seem okay with him? And he goes, yeah, I think so. You know, I think he seems okay. Yeah. But this is the thing. Like, how can you? So, like, you as an adult grown man who takes responsibility and doesn't say he's enabled. Like, then, okay, so what am I supposed to do as a caregiver? No, no, I'm not. You know I mean? I'm not saying you guys shouldn't do this. I'm no, not. No, no, I know, I'm, but I'm saying, like, the, well, there is no good answer here. Like, there is no good answer. That's the fucking yeah. worst part of this whole thing is, like, this is we can. This podcast that creates more questions answers ah yes yeah. yeah that's pretty good yeah. um no there as we could talk about it as much when i'm baseline or whatever you want to call it as we want right but when a push comes to shove when i start becoming manic will i identify that i am changing and acting different and will i start doing the things i need to do to get better that's like the ultimate question of you know my whole life really is will I respond to the people that I know are right in the worst when I need to listen to them the most, mm -hmm. you know? And it scares the fuck out of me, dude. I have nightmares uh, w weekly mm -hmm. of, you know, everyone around me saying you're, you're acting manic, you're acting manic. And I'm like, I'm fine. I swear you're to God, I'm fine all the time, dude. Wow. Very realistic ones. Me, me screaming at people, me saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. And like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, I keep saying it's a slippery slope, but I don't know what else to say. It's like, I am terrified of that. Yeah. Well, All the time. So, I mean, okay. I remember before this last big one in 18, we sat down with a group of friends at a restaurant bar mm -hmm. and you had been, it had been a week where, where it, was, it was obvious that this is what was happening. You were starting to get into a, a manic episode. We sat you down with people who knew you better than I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, look, man, you said, these are people that in the past, I know in the past sometimes you like, you're looking for that one, you're hearing that you're manic manic and one person goes, hey man, you really are. And you go, okay. Right, you got your friend that's put you finally went to the hospital after that person was like, all right, I'm gonna come pick you up and you take you like you locked into that person and you take turns doing that. So that guy, that person was there this time. He goes, hey, I think you're having manic episodes. I said, yeah, I think you're starting to get there. The other guy says, hey, I think you're starting to get there. Why? And you said, why do you think that? I said, well, you've been drinking a lot. And you go, hey, you're the one that picked a bar to meet in to have this conversation. It was like, right, and and that's your thing. You have like an answer for everything. For everything. Normally yeah. you're don't answerless. Yeah. <laughs> Manic, you turn into a politician. Uh, yeah, I know. Or Kellyanne Conway in a manic episode. I know, dude. I really have a rebuttal for everything. Yeah. And I love arguing, and I'm, it's, it's, uh, but continue, continue. So yeah, everyone so, okay, says. So, so, whatever. But going forward, you know, you have these people that you trust. I think I'm one of these people that you trust. Katie's yes. one of these people that you trust. Your girlfriend, your sisters, or these people that you trust. So, you know, even when you get in these episodes, you take turns not trusting anyone. Nah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, before we even get to that point, we think we might be ramping up. Like, it's it like, okay, well, how do we get you back into your routine? Because for, for you, I think that routine is the best way to keep you from getting into these episodes, right? So, it's like, what do you guys got to like go hat in hand and just do what we say for five nights in a row and be like, all right, I'll go to bed at eight. I'll take my medicine. I won't go out. Yeah. Okay. Here's my debit card. Seriously. And that's, that's what I should do. You just gotta just, even if you, even if you think in your heart of hearts that you're not going, you're not ramping, you just gotta be like, all right, I'll do what you say. And here's, here's the issue with that, right? When I start becoming manic or hypomanic, mm -hmm. I get very creative. Mm -hmm. So chances are, there's some sort of project that I've lined up in this time. Mm. So I go, okay, I have a, a shoot or I'm doing this or I got a big show or something. And then you guys are telling me you can't go to that thing. 
Hmm. I'm in the throes of thinking this is the next, you know, great thing that's going to change my life. That's how my brain's operating. And now you guys are saying, go ha- go to bed. You're not allowed to do that thing that you're that you've they because I, I'm just as- assuming here that I have set something up or there is some big show yeah, or there yeah, is, yeah. and it's been like that in the past. So I don't know why it wouldn't be like that in the future. And it goes back to my point of, you know, is comedy the best career for someone? It is, you know, I want, I don't know. Yeah. Man, I mean, going, I have this great idea. I mean, this is the part that kills me and anyone that's, I think, been in my position um, is to look at someone that you love and say, Hey, I know you feel great right now. That's not good. That's the problem. Yeah. How devastating. It sucks. And for you to go, no, I feel great. And us go, you should That's be. the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you feel low, to go, yeah, this is more how you should be. This playing. is it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Mm. I know. That's the crux of it. That is the, uh, mm. the shittiest part. Were you misdiagnosed, or did they get you? Did they get it? Because lots of people are misdiagnosed, and then they get to bipolar, this, 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 or that. No, they knew right away. I was, I was textbook. Uh, I don't know if it was one or two at first, um, but I was in the psych ward for you know a day, and they told my parents the next day, "Hey, he's bipolar," and they were like, "What are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. Um, Ugh, those, those wards are just, I mean, I, I don't know if we're allowed to, the, the, visiting you in Bellevue, mm-hmm. it was like central casting. Yeah. That building, I mean, I know it's, it's get state money and I, there's just, please put more money into that fucking Please, hospital. for the love of God. That is the saddest room and building I've ever been in. And by the way, I worked at a cancer hospital for nine years. Yeah. And it was more hopeful than that building. I know. And then they just lump you in with these people and and who are not, who are on different levels I with know. you. I don't know if there are levels, but there should be levels, I think. I mean, here's the, th- there, there are levels. I know, but I'm saying like, I don't know if they actually separate people by levels. I'm having a the head of a, a, a hospital come on very soon um, and that's one of the questions that I am dying to ask him yeah. and I don't know if he's even allowed to answer but is it like the dating apps like you have, you know you get rated in the dating apps you get rating in the dating yeah there's, uh, there's like the high end they're like you get like a 10 and 8 or whatever the creators to how often you come, come up wow there's a group of people deciding our faces I did not know that yeah they, they let it slip with me like, I admitted into this one, and they're like, we put you as a high da, da. I was like, what? And she goes, oh, shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it is like that. Like, you get a number of how yeah. bad you are, and then I think there are different floors. You're There's got to be different. You're on the hot guy floor. I'm on the hot guy yeah, floor. <laughs> sure when, I, when, when we were in there, you were on the hottest ones I saw. <laughs> Thank top you, five, man. Top five hottest guys. So. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Even the good ones, though, like you were at a very good one in Westchester, mm-hmm. and I remember, and we've talked about this before, but I remember visiting you. You had only been there for, I want to say, a, a week, mm-hmm. less than a week, and you were still manic, but you were doing this thing where you become very calm and let everyone know you're not manic, Yeah, which we know is not, you know, and you're going, and, and we're visiting you in this room, and it's like literal padded, like like walls Mm -hmm. and there's everyone's visiting with someone they got the tag and everyone is with their person and you've got all in your little sweatpants sweatsuit again it looks like a movie and I'm going mad I think you're still manic and you go I'm not manic dude I'm fine I'm fine this this place isn't making me better there's full of sick people in here I'm not getting better you're like I'm fine look at me I'm fine look at me look at that guy and I turn, I look at a guy, and a guy's just walking into the wall over and over again. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're not that guy. Yeah, but I was in the same room but as that guy. But you're in the guy. same room as that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... So the, who's benefit, like how... That's the scariest part of this whole psych ward thing, dude. You're in a room with like four other people mm. at Bellevue. How the fuck do you sleep 
when you're in a room with four people that you don't know that, oh, by the way, are there because they're mentally ill. Yeah, but they don't have their shoelaces. They don't, they don't have anything, <laughs> but still, yeah, it's not safe. they have their fists. No, they it's have not their, safe. It's, yeah. it's not safe. I it's, remember it's, the, the lack of sleep, that you, and you're supposed to get sleep, right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, tell someone to sleep when they're... So what do you do? You, you pay more money to have a private room? Yeah. Yeah. So or you go to one of the nicer hospitals. Just have more money, dude. Why didn't I think of that? That's our show. Thank you so much. Have more money. Yeah. That's the issue. We Everyone should just have more money. So we did, we did get an answer to the question. Just uh, have more money. Mm-hmm. It's so simple. Yeah. Seldom are rich people uh, mentally ill. So no. that's good. Yeah. But that's true. I mean, you, you know, that, that, and again, that was the nice one. I know. No, Bellevue was not the nice one. No, no, one. no. The other one, the story of the guy running into the wall was at the nice one. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. But I only had one roommate at the nice one, which feels more manageable. Yeah. It's like if one person attacks me in the middle of the night, okay. Yeah. You know. That was a good night. Not a good night, but it's better than four people waking you up, you know. <sighs> That's, I didn't know it was four. Yeah. I mean. They're overcrowded, man. There's not enough resources. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, <laughs> I remember while I was in there, I was like drafting up like reform, like, you know, psych ward reform uh, ideas and like presenting them in the group meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this is the thing. I hope, you know, I, I, you're, I think it's our job to laugh at some of these moments. Yeah. The, the, p- picturing you with a PowerPoint presentation. It wasn't a PowerPoint. It was like a notebook, but I was, but I was serious <laughs> and with a felt tip pen because they won't even give you a pen because they're scared you're going to stab somebody. And I'm like, look, seriously, there should be a different floor for... And they're like, okay, man, uh, it's coloring time. <laughs> I know. It, art therapy. It's art therapy, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I remember one time it was, um, speaking about finding like the humor in this, it's like, we're all trying to corral you. Yeah. And get you home at a reasonable hour. But then we have, we feel bad going out and living our life. Yeah. Which you shouldn't. No, but it's, you know, it's like, all right, so in this particular night, it was Halloween. So we all wanted to go out and do Halloween. And we went to this bar, and I was hosting that party. Like, I was, like, being, like, a red carpet correspondent as uh, people came in. It was a dead celebrity theme, so I, like, interviewed them, and it was, like, a silly yeah. thing for this video. And you were f- f- manic. Uh-huh. And we were really hoping that you weren't coming, but your family was coming, and it was, you know, but we were like, you should really stay at home, and again, feeling bad, what should we do? And, you know, so it's dancing that, that, that fine line, walking that fine line, rather. And I'm hosting this red carpet, and <laughs> I look over, and I see this man dressed as a woman, uh, and it's you as Amy Winehouse, mm-hmm. and you have on the tightest shirt imaginable, Tiny shorts. Tiny shorts. Yeah. I think heels. I think it was a dress. Dress. Just no, so tight. So tight. Her. Yeah. And this insane wig, uh, lollipop, fake tattoos all over you. Yeah. And I was like, Matt, you have to go home, but also let's get a picture. Right <laughs> you look Take a five, picture, yeah. but you're going home. Five minutes, you're out of here. <laughs> Look, we're doing one lap. Ten Look, minutes tops. You, yeah, you can, and I'm calling you can use the bathroom, but the car's in that. Yeah, that's car's it. on route. Yeah. And then, seriously, in 30 minutes, you have to be out. In 45, you got to go. You All right, they're playing Drake. One you more, can dance one to song. one more Drake song, yeah. and then you got to go. Yeah. That's funny, man. You looked so funny. It was a good costume. <laughs> I remember that costume. Yeah. So we're back. You know, the episodes. You know what the fuck it is. You know what time it is. It's mental health time. Mm-hmm. That would be funny if I did the podcast like that. Yeah. Like a radio DJ. I was thinking more like a scared straight thing. What do you mean? Like, uh, you want to be crazy like me? No, you don't want to be, you know, the scared straight. Person. Oh, yeah. Like Jerry Springer's type. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come to camp. Remember that? I remember like the dare guy coming to my school. 
and he had the, like the briefcase that he opened. It had every drug you could imagine in those things. Uh-huh. And you're like, holy shit. I thought they were all real drugs. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was just I was like, what's in the white stuff in that bag? Even as a child. That just intrigued me. Yeah. Yeah. I was terrified. Of drugs? Yeah. I was a good Christian boy. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, even smoking weed, I had tremendous guilt for a long time about smoking weed for the first time. Let's talk about guilt. Okay. This is something I wanted to ask you. Yeah. When you get in these episodes, mm-hmm. you say unbelievably hurtful things with a precision that's like like you've been trained on how to hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. You know exactly my soft spot Mm -hmm. and you come right at it. Yeah. Uh, Over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's to the point, and I've talked to some people that you've said some things to like this, where it's like, that was, I know he's sick right now, but that was, that felt really, you know, again, it feels like when someone's drunk and they say something and you're like, I'm sorry I was drunk. And you're like, yeah, but that came from somewhere. That's that whole drunk word, sober thoughts. Yeah. So I guess, um, my question is, why do you do that? I don't know, dude. I think. You're you're such a sweet boy. I know. And I've obviously thought about this a lot and people have told me the things that I said and I went, holy shit. Um, I think it's a way for me to get back some semblance of power when I'm feeling so hopeless and so, like, people are taking away my phone, Mm -hmm. people are taking away my right to go out, people are telling me that I can't do shows, people are telling me that I have to go to the hospital, and I'm just like, okay, what can I say that will make them go away? You know, how can I hurt them so bad that they'll go, all right, Fuck you. Go do what you want. You're getting, so you're getting pretty good at it. I know. I go for the fucking jugular, dude. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, I've obviously apologized to many people. There's people that I've tried to apologize to and they won't respond, you know. Um, because it's like this thing. It's like, that wasn't really mad. And I think it's like, okay, but is that really mad? I know. Like, own your mental health. I know. That is me, it's me, but it's like, but it wasn't me. So this is, again, a fine line. This, it's, this shit is hella fine line, dude. Hella nuanced, dude. Hella fine line, hella whatever you want to call it. Hella whack. Mm-hmm. Is that because fair? Because it's, yeah. Is it you? Is it me? Are those my deep, dark thoughts that I'm just not sharing, you know? Because, you're, yeah, you're quite quiet compared to your manic self. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, I pride myself on being, like, nice you, you, and rational. Yeah, very and practical. Very practical. I'm so a very practical you person. words come out of you. You're really such a... When people meet you, they're like, they, they sense how genuine you are. It's like, what, when I introduce you to someone new, that's, like, one of the first things they say. And that's why it's, like... When you have these, when you say these things, you're like, "Oh, he's genuine." Yeah, yeah. I, they're not genuine. They're real. I really, you know, I don't feel that way about the people that I love. Obviously, mm-hmm. that would be fucking weird <sighs> if I had, you know, the things I've said to like my own mom, the things I've said to my dad. Like, these yeah. are, like I said, I'm losing everything. People are they're just taking it all away. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying anything to get any semblance of power back. I think that's what I have, you know, deduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Is that you? Is that not you? Why you say it? I guess we get why you say it. It's just that how, like, how quickly it comes to mind. Yeah. And how hurtful it feels for someone who's never hurtful. Who goes out of their way to kind of... I hate conflict in a way that is detrimental to my life. Yeah. Yeah, you should be a little bit more. Like, people do and say things, and I'm like, eh, okay. Because I don't want right. to have a conflict. Complete opposite. You are the complete opposite. Yeah. But I also hate conflict. 
Do you? Yeah, I don't like conflict. I just don't like... The, I want the record to be straight. I care too much about the record. I, here's a bad example, but like we hit a go, I hit a golf ball into the people ahead of us, and that's like a rude thing to do. Mm-hmm. And the guy in front of us goes, you know, hey, what the fuck, man, or whatever he said. And uh, I murmur, murmured to myself, sorry. And you said, hey, man, chill out, relax. It's going to be cool. It's fine, or whatever you said. And uh, I think that's the perfect uh, little microcosm yeah. of how, because these guys could have been ready to fight. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm going, I don't want to fight this guy. Right. And I don't think you want to fight the guy. No, you, well, you but you have. You were gonna fight him. I was gonna fight him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you, I've seen you like a car makes a turn in you know when they're not supposed to, and you. Oh, that gets me going. That's and, the number one get me going. And you'll hit a car. I I have hit a car. Yeah, I've seen you hit a car I two times. Hit a car, spit on one once. Yeah. I don't like it when it's my light and they come zooming in, and they break. Too fast, too late. It makes me jump in the yeah. crosswalk. My safe zone. Yeah. I'm walking here. Yeah. yeah. And then I have to, and, you know, and then and then what happens is they know they're wrong. Yeah. But they, because we're flawed men, it's always men, they double down and they get mad at me. Yeah. And they want me to hurry. I'm like, no, it was you. So I stand there and, you know, I've, I've had guys get out of cars and start to do this whole thing. And, yeah. Yeah, I've slammed hoods. Yeah. It happened recently. I was, uh, um... In Spain, which is crazy, we've been doing this for 30 minutes and I haven't brought it up yet. This is insane. But a uh, guy does the same thing, pulls into the crowd, t- is taking a left turn, goes right into my crosswalk. I was on the beach. Uh, it was a beach day, and he's got like a whole crew with him. Yeah. And I do the stare off with him. And he starts saying something to me. I don't think it was Spanish. I don't know what he was speaking to me. And uh, I just smiled, and uh, he... I looked down and I realized that I was in like bright yellow swimming trunks and Birkenstocks. I was like, let me, I should probably just keep walking. Yeah. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about the fire extinguisher? No. Okay. High school. No, no. I'm in college and I'm home for college from college because I got kicked out. And uh, the high school that I went to is having like... I was a freshman in college. The seniors that were in high school, I still knew some of them. So they invited me to this uh, party, a cast party for one of their shows. I go to the the party. Everything's fine. Apparently the police got called or something, so everyone has to leave. Everyone's walking down the stairs. This kid picks up a fire extinguisher and just starts spraying in the fucking establishment that this person threw a party for. The white shit. The white it's shit everywhere. everywhere. Which Dust. I don't even know how you get yeah. How do you get that out? So I knew the person that had thrown the party. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Like, stop. And uh, he's like, fuck you, you don't know who I am, I do what I want, blah 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 blah. Uh, keep spraying, keep spraying, all the way down to the first floor. He gets in his he gets in the car and uh, I pick up the fire extinguisher for some reason and I just spray his car. Mm. Yeah. Unbeknownst to me, the car was full in a way that seemed clownish. (laughs) It seemed like it was a a joke. How many people came out of the car? Uh, It was not a minivan, but there were minivan numbers (laughs) that came out of this BMW, like a coupe. Uh But, you know, we're all young people packing the cars. And they get out of the car and beat the shit out of me with a, with the fu- with the fire extinguisher. Jesus. I still have a scar on my back, like these two little mini circles. They hit me in the back with the fire extinguisher. I was bleeding. I'm so drunk that uh, I'm fine. I don't even know that I'm bleeding. I get in the cab. I go home. Uh, I wake up the next day to my sister going. And I'm like, whoa, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck's going on? She's like, there's blood, there's blood everywhere. I, I was bleeding all over my bedroom sheets. And she's like, what the fuck happened? Why are you bleeding? Oh my God. My mom was there for some reason. And uh, they were like, what happened? What happened? And I, I had to explain the story to them. And they were very upset that I... Uh, that I did that. I don't know what got into me, dude. It was a... Uh, well, you look... Uh, good friend. 
No. That's the story of a good friend. No, dude. Dumb not a, friend. Dumb friend. But none of friend. none of my friends that were there jumped in to help me they either. They were good friends. I don't they know. They were smart friends. They were smart friends. Bad friends, but good friends. Bad friends. You were a good friend, but dumb friends. Got your ass kicked. <laughs> okay, Seinfeld. That's how you went. <laughs> good friend. Who is it? Hey. Hey, I'm doing a podcast. What? I'm doing the podcast. Who is it? All right, man. I'll, I'll, is it dad? Fuck. Yeah. Is it your dad? It's my uncle dad. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why I shared that story, but I, it's a weird thing that I did. <sighs> I didn't know that story. That's crazy. Yeah, I still have the scar. That kind of confrontation, physical, I am definitely afraid of. But I was hammered. I was very drunk. I'm the nicest drunk now because of how scared I am to get in a fight with someone. Yeah. I don't want to. And I was a door guy at a nightclub. Like, I saw how irrational these people were. I know. I remember when the guy poked you in the eye. Oh, my God. I was a good friend. No, I was a bad friend. Smart, smart friend. Smart friend. Yeah. Yeah. The guy was huge. The guy looked like Gaston. Yeah, Gaston just came over. 6'9", that guy. 6'6", mm, six, six, but still. Yeah. He was big. Maybe 6'9". 6'9 six, nine. Six, nine in heels, yeah. He was ginormous. Big man. Couldn't have been drunker. Kicked him out. And no, was close. we didn't kick him out. It was like, he was like the close. last one out of the bar. We're like, yeah. hey man, that's the exit. Yeah. He tried to go the wrong way, and he bent down to talk to all five eleven of me. Yeah. And he poked me in the eye. Yeah. Which was just so hurtful. He was hammered. And left and you went, should I have done something? I was like, what were you going to do? Yeah. There was, now that I think about it, there was a fire extinguisher right behind us. Right. Yeah, yeah, just spray them down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fire extinguishers. You do you get, I, I do, I was very nervous. Maybe it's just, again, because physical conflict really freaks me out. And while I do think I would destroy you in a one-on-one basketball game, you would definitely kick my ass in any kind of a physical altercation. Right. I was so scared you were going to get physical with me during these episodes. Yeah, I'm so glad that I didn't. I'm so glad. Like you're very, I, like, I'm all I'm on edge. Like, buddy. come at me, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ready to fight anybody and, and, at any and, moment. And again, it's just so it's such an interesting dichotomy because you lose all, like, you're so rational. We just talked about it, but you lose all of it. Yeah. Like, I remember poor Katie is following you around, taking, you know, do, you know, trying to keep you on a short lease and all this shit and you know she's like missing shifts at work and you know having to cancel and her, you know her whole life's upside down and, and, and you come in and you were like full blowing like, I fucking give everything to this girl I give and I give and I give and what do I get nothing from her and I was like what are you fucking what are you what giving are you talking bro about yeah right very performative I'm very performative yeah you I'm did very... this thing with your hand yeah 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 very yeah. Arthur Miller yeah 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 I'm in a play. Yeah. I'm in a play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Katie's poor Uber rating plummeted <laughs> during all of this. Uh, I quit a career. Huh? I quit the career. I know. You I, remember, I was f- late for a meeting. I remember I was like late for a meeting because I was up. You broke into my house at 4 a.m., uh-huh. uh, stole my liquor and left. Uh huh. <clears throat> and I was couldn't go back to sleep. I, was just I didn't so really break up. in. I had the keys. You had a key. Yeah. Which. I got back from you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I still yeah. you uh, so I couldn't go back to sleep. Went got to work late, and it kind of like got me your full. And I remember being like, "You don't even know what I'm dealing with." Like, yeah, you, this is such a small part of my life is coming to this stupid fucking meeting on time, compared to what I'm just dealing with. And I just enjoyed the rest of my life so much more uh, that you know. That's the silver lining, I guess, of all of this. Like, we try to find these moments. And, like, yeah. I'm more equipped to deal with you as a friend. You now, I think, trust us a little bit more. Like, you know, you got to try to chase these positives when you can. And- I know. I just hope I listen. I've thought about getting it tattooed. I've thought about... You a tattoo? I've thought about getting listen tattooed on me. But then... Katie's like, you'll just be like, you guys forced me to get that tattoo. <laughs> well, you wrote, you wrote a note to me saying, if, show this to me if I ever don't believe you. I know. You know, I have it. I know. But I, I, I have f- it tattooed on my lower back. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you always can just pull it out. That's mm-hmm. good. No, I just, I worry so much that I won't listen, man. And, uh, you know, 
statistically, I'm O for fucking. I'm like two, I don't know. One two for eleven. Yeah, one wonders like that time that that time the, the aforementioned uh, time that I told you I think you're ramping up and yeah. you're great with me. Like, but like maybe you did listen. I did. I, I went to bed. I didn't go out. I didn't go out party. anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So maybe. I know. I gotta hope. I have to believe that I can listen. Do you think having? I guess this is the whole thing is like it's different for everyone and we have to but like does having a girlfriend help you 100 percent routine and all those oh things? yeah yeah she is well she's certainly helpful but I mean not Katie in particular but I mean just in general do you think like a relationship is can be a useful tool yeah a healthy relationship is fucking huge for people mm -hmm. like me I mean I can only speak from my experience right she makes sure I take my meds. She makes sure. Does she make I, you do the, the tongue up thing? No, no, she believes me. Okay. Sometimes I will take my medicine right in front of her, and then like, she'll pop up out of bed and go, "Did you take your meds?" <laughs> and I'd be like, "Yeah, I you saw me." And she's like, "No, you, I don't like." She doesn't believe me, and I'm like, "Babe, I, I swear to God, what are you, yeah. what are you talking about?" Uh, so that's fun, um, but she's just worried. You guys are sleeping in the same bed. We do sleep in the same bed. Yeah, I don't. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, she makes sure that I get up at a decent time. She makes sure that I, I don't go to bed too late. I, uh, I recently <laughs> popped, then there's like some shitty things, right? Like I, I woke up from this weird dream that I had the other night and I went to my computer. It's like six in the morning and I just start typing out the dream. Cause I was like, I have to remember this dream. This was so weird. And like. I'm just going to write it out. Mm -hmm. And she wakes up and she's like, you're scaring the shit out of me. And I'm like, why am I, how am I, I'm fine. I just, I just got to do this real quick. Yeah. And then I'll go back to bed. And she was like, this is very strange behavior. I don't like it. Please come back to bed. So like, I'm trying to type as fast as I can. Uh, and, you know, I woke up and realized that it was like pretty much gibberish. Mm -hmm. it, that, that happens to me sometimes. Like, I think this... Yeah, we yeah, idea that. Yeah, yeah is is whatever. So there'll be times where it's like one, two in the morning, and I will have feel this rush of inspiration, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I gotta go to the computer and just type out these thoughts that I'm having, and I can't well, because that, I, I know thought you were gonna say that felt like you feel like you're in a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. So then I sit in bed and go, wow, this sucks. If I do get up, she's going to think I'm manic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I don't get up, I might lose this idea that could be a joke. <laughs> no. If it makes you feel better, it have, I, you know, I don't, I have the same issue. Or, or if I've had a girlfriend in the past or really anyone, and I'm waking up at two o'clock in the morning to put a note in my phone so I don't forget. Yeah. And like, for sure, I felt that like, who are you texting? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm writing a joke about snakes and now it's generous. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not going to make sense, but it's I have not to write going it. to make any sense in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, you got I'll show you this fucking maybe I'll post. It's like the weirdest thing I've ever typed out. So, uh, to anyone who's dating the comic, if we're texting on our if we're on our phones at 2 a.m. Yeah. We're writing a shitty joke that the world will never hear, but it's very important that we write it down. It's, we don't really care about if you're feeling insecure about it or it's not. It's necessary. We have yeah. to write the joke for the world to never hear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of the process. It's part of it. It's part of the process. No, I, you know, and you're probably right. It probably is nonsense. But in the moment, it feels like I need to... You have to do that. It is nonsense, but that doesn't mean it's nonsensical. You have to do it. Yeah. You have to write these things down. I know. Keep writing them down. I know. I vote right down. I know. I go right down. Yeah. Especially dreams. People love hearing about dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything worse? No, it's the worst. It's like, I had this dream last time. Like, eh, you were going to tell me a make believe story? Yeah. I want to hear a real story. Yeah. I want to hear a real fucking story. Yeah. I used to date this girl. She would tell me every dream she ever had. And then she had this one dream and she starts going, she goes, Oh my God, babe, I just had this unbelievable dream. I was like, Here are you. And she goes, I dreamed a way that we figured out, the world, I like, figured out a way to beat Instagram and like be happy without Instagram. And I was like, okay, what was it? She goes, I don't remember the rest of the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams suck. Uh, and only second to someone telling you about their dream is someone telling you about their work shift at a restaurant. Yeah. 
and everyone's ever been like, I had a great shift. No, it's yeah. always something, some disaster that when they explain it to you doesn't seem as much of a disaster. Like they ran out of something and it, and it ruined the night and you're like, okay. Yeah. Yep. Can I submit a third? Yeah. Uh, telling me about your fantasy football. That's that might go number one actually. Yeah. I'd rather hear a dream. Dude, than... I had Gronk and all he they got tackled on the one. Or yeah. else I went, well, look, and then they show you the thing. I, I don't, don't see care. Anything. Yeah, I lost by four point five points. Oh my god. Yeah. First year I'm not doing fantasy. I feel great. This is like my fourth year. I've never even made the playoffs. I'm so bad at fantasy football. It's it's actually alarming. But imagine being good at it. No, I don't want to be good at it. No. Yeah. Those guys get in trouble being on their phones. Actually, those guys don't get in trouble being on their phones, and they should be getting in trouble being on their phones. Yeah, yeah, Do yeah. Waivers at 2 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta hit the waiver wire, babe. Yeah. Ugh. Fantasy sports. What? Are, you know people used to do that before the internet? I, I did. Really? Mm -hmm. You would count it out, mm -hmm. and then someone would check. Well, I would pick my players. I remember I would uh, email them in, and uh, my dad's friend would do all the things, yeah. So you had an email. I had email, but they didn't. But have, they didn't there have, was no point generating. Yeah, things. that's. They did it in jail. Wow. Yeah, when I spent that time in jail, they did a. Uh, they had fantasy football in jail, which was illegal, so you had to do it. It was very clandestine the way they did it. Cool. And I remember they're like, "Do you want to get in on this?" I was like, "Uh, no." <laughs> I'm good. No, I'm good because you know how I am with conflict, and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna hear them be like, "Who's in charge of counting?" Like, yeah, I don't yeah. Believe whoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do fantasy football in jail. Don't go to jail. Don't go to jail. I would say don't go to jail. Yeah. Stay out of the hospitals. Stay out of the psych ward. And I, that's another thing, right? Like, the hospital should be this place that I need to go to get better. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, if I was sick, why do I fear the hospital so much, right? Mm -hmm. What can I do? to stop making the hospital seem like the worst case scenario thing that could happen in my life. Well, this is out of my depth, but you know, your hospital experience is you go to the hospital when you're at your worst. Yeah. It's not like you're going for checkups. The no. version you have for checkups is your therapy that you do. Yeah. How, how frequent are you doing it? Once a week. Once a week. Yeah. I mean, and I, maybe two. 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 Yeah. Maybe two. And, but that's uh, your check-in. That's your checkup. Right. right. And I also talk to a psychiatrist extra. once a month. Okay. So, yeah. Um, you feel good about this once a month and once a week? Yeah. yeah. Once a week. And... Yeah. It's a good check-in. When I went, it was once a week. It was great. Yeah. I don't like it over the thing, but I've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what were you going to say that that maybe well, so if like, I get in there before I'm at my worst, but then it's like, why am I at the hospital? Well, that's what I'm saying. Your checkup is those is that therapy session. Yeah. So the hospital, it makes sense that you don't love the hospital because that means things got so bad you needed to be fucking hospitalized. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's not usually someone's first stop. It's someone's last stop. I know. But there's got to be something in between. There's, you know... I, 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 maybe it's just a you thing. It's a, maybe, I mean, it's all culture, right? It's like where you grew up, how you grew up. Like, I'm like, uh, my, uh, like I'm thinking about my dad who's 73. He has like three doctor's appointments a week. I think he loves it. Yeah. I think he loves it. He's like a, he's getting a tune up. So he goes, ah, I mean, he pretends like he doesn't like it, but he's like, yeah, he's going in. He's got to get his ears wax removed. He's got to get his lungs thing. He's got a frozen shoulder. He gets checked on. And he feels better after doing these things. Yeah. Like, don't you feel better after therapy? Yes. Sometimes. Sometimes I feel like a whole bag of shit. That's okay though too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Depends. So, depends on what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I know that before when I'm manic, I've been like, just get me out of the city and fucking. Yeah. That was suggested. Put me in a room and give me a microphone. Like, just, you know, very stupid. Uh, unrealistic. Because I wouldn't stay in the room. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, that's, I remember it was be like, your family want to get a cabin and like just have you. But I think it's just to get you away and from the buzz of the city. But people are manic in Sandusky, Ohio. I know. People are manic in cabins by themselves. It's, it has nothing most, to... Yeah. yeah. I imagine most. <laughs> That's another thing. Cabins kind of make you manic. Yeah? I don't know. It's a cabin hot take. fever? Cabin fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if it's a destination cabin. 
We did that for Thanksgiving once, and I fucking ruined the whole thing. Were you, yeah, you had a, were you manic? Yeah, oh. it was three years ago. That was that, yeah. I ruined the whole trip. What'd you do to the turkey? I didn't do anything to the turkey. I just was yelling and saying I wanted to leave, and it was bad. It was but they, I think they, yeah, that's not good. But they probably knew that it would be tricky to have you there. Yeah, but, you know. Still, it's fucking Thanksgiving. It's like my family's favorite holiday. I run the whole goddamn thing. Mm. But what are you going to do? <laughs> There's this year. There's this year, baby. This year, you're going to knock it out of the park. This baby. year, write a I'm song bringing for rice pudding. Write a little rap song for everybody. That wouldn't be a good idea. That would be a red flag. But that's maybe the... Okay, so we have hearing about dreams, hearing about work shift, hearing about fantasy football... And then having to listen to one of your manic rap songs. That's I want to put those in the. I think manic rap song would probably be on the top of that list. Remember when you wrote one and you started a diss? You wanted to do a diss thing with me and my penis. Yeah. You had a whole outro about my. penis. I know. I know. I was very mad at you. You couldn't even give me the intro. No, I gave you the outro. You think people are gonna listen to the end of that song? No, no, no. just rambling. I didn't even write a song. I was just like, turn, <laughs> turn it on, hit record. This is gonna be genius. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you have anything you want to say? I guess I just think to anyone who's listening, to all uh, four of you, the caregiver role is a very difficult role. And it's, there's no perfect way to do it. There's no blueprint. We can keep trying to do our best and customize it to the person that we're giving care to. But I think don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're falling short because it's very, very hard to do. Yeah. And I, you know, I, and it changes. It it's changes not even like, like this. Yeah. It changes like every day. It's different. Again, when you're in the hospital, one minute I was your proxy. The next minute you took me off. Then it was your mother. Then it was your sister. Then it was your stepmom. Yeah. Then it was, so you have to just, I think be willing to take it on the chin a little bit and, uh, know that there's no, you know, you won't do it perfectly because you're dealing with an imperfect, you know, situation. Um, but but to also not put too much pressure on yourself and realize that the person that is at the end of the day does have to take care of themselves in some way. And I don't think it means like hit, you have to hit rock bottom and hurt yourself because that's like the worst case scenario. Yeah, rock bottom with this disease is bad and scary and can lead to and you, you can't yeah you can't yeah. recover from rock yeah. bottom yeah so but but you do have to but say, there does become the nest but like you have to do yeah there becomes a point where you can't do anything else no. you might have to touch a stove yeah 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 and, and, and maybe that's wrong uh, you know I, I, I don't know maybe some guy's pulling his hair out listening to this being like that's the complete opposite bad advice maybe and to that I say I'm just a comedian <laughs> Yeah. But I, you know, I'm trying, you know, we try every day with you. And uh, shout out to your family who's so good with you. Yeah. They've been amazing. And I'm so blessed to uh, have that support system and you. And, uh, you know, thank you for being there. And I'm sorry that I made a rap song about your penis. And I'm sorry that. I uh, said that you weren't funny or whatever I said when I was really mean on the oh, train. Oh, you do remember? Yeah. Yeah, no, you do say that a lot. Yeah. It's okay. You can catch me at Caroline's on November 17th <laughs> and Thanksgiving night. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. All right, what's your uh, thing? Where can they follow you? My name, Dan Davies. Dan Davies. At I'll, Dan Davies. I'll pop up. Okay. Um... Thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this. Of course. I'm glad that uh, you have this. I think other people are listening and are glad that they have this. You said only four people are listening. Now you're saying you're glad that I'm doing this? After you... this episode, dude, get ready. The you're numbers? Gonna get, you're going to get that Dasani sponsorship. Man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening to what the episode. What do you want to do now? You have a call, don't you? Oh, my God. In two minutes. Nice. Perfect timing. Yeah. Hey. I love you, bro, bro. I love you too, man. Yeah. I'm sorry if it wasn't funny. If it wasn't funny, what was the tagline that we came up with? I thought we were doing this together. If it was, it might not have been funny, but it's real. It was real. 
Might not have been funny. Might not have been funny. At least it was real. That's not that good. I remember being... If, it, if it's not funny... It's still it's real. It's real as hell. Nice.